areas, but essentially it's about collaboration and the different levels of what collaboration does on a theoretical level and a social level and a community level. It's also, I would say, about innovation of content. So it's very much rooted in the notion of an avant garde, but with certain social parameters around that that hopefully are responsive to contemporary concerns. And finally, in its very essential makeup, it is, it is guerrilla, it is responsive. It doesn't necessarily have like a focus base. The notion of enemies is that it works with institutions and ideas and countries and languages and spaces to create something new every time. So we collaborate to curate collaboration, and that's really essential because it means that every single thing we've done with enemies is different. It doesn't have the same form because it does respond to the people who are involved and the conditions in the countries and the places. So that's essentially the purpose of it, but that's relatively ambiguous. So if I just tell you how it began and what we've done, maybe that will shed a bit more light on what we're trying to do. Um, I began writing in 2010, relatively recently, and before that I'd done absolutely radically different things in my life. I don't have any background in literature, I didn't really read literature as a child, and I think that's very much affected my curatorial purview. I was very lucky, just maybe six months after writing and publishing a few poems, to be invited to go to read at a few festivals in Europe. And by doing so, what I found was that there was an extraordinary amount of really interesting European work outside of the English language that was happening that no one in English had any idea about whatsoever. The reason for that is not only because England can be an incredibly parochial island culture, but also because these massive European figures of poetry had completely swamped the possibility of the 21st century European poetry to becoming known all these post-war kind of dead or old grey men had completely swarmed over the possibility that there was like a European avant-garde or a communication or a community with the UK. So I got a job uh, as an editor of a magazine called 3AM and I started to do interviews called the Mantemal series with 3AM. And we did 98 interviews with contemporary European poets, young and old, both genders, avant-garde and formative. We, I interviewed today Shrejevich and then I interviewed like 20 year old sound poets from different countries. Pretty much every country in Europe was represented circulating in Asia. A lot of people in this room will know a lot of people who are interviewed in that series. And what happened with that accidentally in 2011 is some of these nations from the poets who I was interviewing asked me to host readings in London. Reluctantly I agreed because they hosted me in their countries. I never really wanted to organise to start with. I put on a series of poets in London and what I found was that no one wanted to go and see them. <laughs> no one had any investment in going to see three Romanian poets in East London on a Thursday evening. It's not only because people are parochial and not interested in things outside their own language, but also because in London there's three readings a night. So what I started to think was, how can I innovate this notion so that if we get no audience, at least the poets will have a generous experience in collaboration, was the way I learned to do that. So I would pair the visiting poets with local writers. They would generate brand new collaborative work. They would be tied into the community. They would build relationships. And instead of having that kind of artistic experience where you get invited to go to a festival, you stay in a kind of dead hotel, you return to your room crying a little bit, and you give like a 10 minute reading, these guys were hanging out with poets, they were integrating in the community. Obviously I had massive advantages because London, English language, is the lingua franca whether we like it or not, and also it's a city that a lot of people are attracted to send their poets to. So I have a massive advantage in the sense that people are always asking me rather than me chasing them. What I found really early from doing that is that we had these incredible community events. And I mentioned it yesterday, instead of pretending that poetry is something we can sell public tickets to, we found that lots of poets, lots of people interested in literature started to come. And naturally that started to move into art scenes, music scenes, because that's people's friends and from different people. So it was really an organic community-based growth. In 2012, the German Charitable Foundation suggested to me, I actually was just in a conversation chatting with someone, they said, I really like the collaboration you've done internationally. Have you ever thought about doing that in England? And I was like, mm, yes, absolutely. And I kind of came up with the idea on the spot <laughs> to do something that related to English-based collaboration. They gave me some time to apply for funding, and I applied, and the Enemies Project was born from there. I managed to then begin a year, the first year of the Enemies Project was all about domestic collaboration. The theoretical kind of goal was actually to overcome parochialism on the English poetry scene. There's been incredible divisions in English poetry between formal, traditional kinds of poetry and avant-garde. 